Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Okay, I hear a few goods. Well, we want to begin our morning with just the first two verses from Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will, pray, I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. And so as we gather this morning, whether it's in person or online, we get to sing the praises of God. We get to tell of his wonderful deeds. So will you stand as we begin our worship service? the clouds, a strange and lovely sound, I hear it in the thunder and the rain, it's ringing in the skies, like cannons in the night, the music of the universe plays, singing you are holy, great and mighty, the moon stars declare who you are i'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my heart will sing of how great you are song of galaxies it's reaching far beyond the milky way let's join in with the sound come on let's sing it loud as the music of the universe plays we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars
Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. Heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. God wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Good morning. You may take a seat. I just want to thank you and welcome you to Hillmar Covenant Church. If this is your first time, thank you for joining us. Um, we have a welcome card that you can find in the back of your pew. Please fill those out so we can reach out to you and just thank you for being here. As well as we take prayer requests on the back of the card. And we pray over these every week in our staff meetings. So any kind of prayer, praise, um, just Whatever's on your heart, we will pray for those. Um, and then today, we actually have a special guest with us. His name is Eric Johnson, and he is from Alaska Christian College. He is going to be just telling us what has been going on there at the college and um, just where our support for the college has been and what is just going to continue on. So Eric, if you don't mind coming up. All right. Hey, wonderful to be here. I'm going to have a video to share a little bit more about ACC with you, and then I'll say a few words after. Hamilton. I'm the president of Alaska Christian College. It gives me great joy to invite you today to find out more about this amazing school in Sodaton, Alaska, that reaches mainly to Alaska Native young people across our state. Let's go together. So we began with just one building on 10 and a half acres in the year 2001. 
It was a miracle that we had this amazing administration building on these acres with an indoor swimming pool. We have grown exponentially since then, since 2001. We now have had hundreds and hundreds of students come to Alaska Christian College. We currently have more than 50 staff in our campus, volunteer full-time and part-time. And it's been a great joy to watch us grow now to 20 different buildings, mainly built by volunteers who come into Alaska each summer or from Alaska to help us to build all these amazing buildings. I'm standing today in the uh, student services area. We call it the Commons. And this is really the, the headquarters for students when they want to come and relax in between classes. So it's such a great joy to be alongside these students, growing and learning with them. We knew when we planted Alaska Christian College that we also needed to really help our students with mental health needs. And so we planted this ministry called New Hope Counseling Center. And its whole purpose is to reach the mental needs of the students of Alaska Christian College. On top of that, we also are open to the community. And last year, almost 3,000 client hours were provided as they came here to get the only faith-based Christian counseling here on the Kenai Peninsula. New Hope Counseling Center exists to heal, restore, and equip our young people, a big part of all that we do here at Alaska Christian College. So Alaska Christian College is a fully accredited AA degree granting institution. We offer four degrees for our students who come here. Really, in the village, you think about what are the jobs that our students can have when they return to their homes. And the number one provider of jobs in the village is a school district, and so we have a paraprofessional degree program. And then secondly, there's always a health center. And the degree in behavioral health assists our students to get full-time jobs as well in those villages. And then third, of course, Christian ministry. Students can provide a plethora of opportunities in the village in Christian ministry. And the general ed degree is useful all over the villages as well. And so we're grateful that we have these four degrees that give students an opportunity to finish there or to continue on and add those to other degree programs as they leave Alaska Christian College and matriculate to other colleges and universities. So everything we teach is from a Christian worldview, and it is really the filter by which we teach all of our courses. So every student that comes doesn't just learn about English, doesn't just learn about science, they learn about it maybe through the lens of the scriptures or the lens of Christian thought. And so we're excited we can offer that as really the only unique place in Alaska that offers this to Alaska Native young people. And so we can't do it alone. We need people from all across America and Alaska to invest in the lives of Alaska Native young people. We cannot do this alone. Greater than 50% of all of our income comes in from donations, from individuals like you, and from churches, and from institutions, and from corporations, people that believe in Christian higher education, especially here in Alaska. We know statistics are against us. We know that many things that are happening in our state would make it unrealistic to think about there being a Christian college in Soldatna that really reaches specifically this group of young people. But we're committed to it. We're sold on it. We want to do all that we can to reach Alaska for Christ, and that comes through Christian higher education. This is our mission. This is our vision. We invite you today to be part of it through your gifts and your offerings and your prayers. God bless you. Kuiana Teku. All right. Well, that's a little bit about ACC. And uh, man, I almost, you guys, some of you probably think it's cold here, but I almost broke out my shorts this morning. <laughs> this is nice. Uh, hey, just uh, um, a word of thanks to you. So speaking of serving students, uh, Alaska Native young people, um, your uh, church has uh, prayed for uh, for many years for the ministry of Alaska Christian College. We started five days after 9-11 for a little context. And so thanks for your prayers. And also, um, many of you might uh, know and be familiar with Harvey and Linda Lundquist, who are part of this church. They've been with us for a number of years. And the church uh, financially supports Harvey at, and his work at Alaska Christian College. He's a very handy man to have around. And so we're grateful for Harvey. And then um, I just want to say I'm pretty excited to uh, share that Maybe not all of you know, but there's a, maybe raise your hand if you're part of the mission team that might be coming up this summer to uh, serve at ACC. Anyone? All right, great. Well, we're looking forward to having a team serving on our campus this summer. And uh, hey, just a few words of personal context. Maybe I'll have some connection with some of you, but uh, I served up the hill in Arnold, California as a youth and associate pastor. And uh, 
And then uh, I was good friends with a guy that used to be, I think he worked with the youth here many moons ago, a uh, man named John Madvig. And uh, if you know John, and uh, anyway, just lots of fun connections. So anyway, if you would like to connect with me after the service, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, my title is Vice President of Advancement, and so I'm going to be around this uh, next week before going to uh, Chicago for Covenant Midwinter Conference, just meeting with donors around Northern California. Looking forward to my time here. And so God bless you. Thanks for supporting the ministry of Alaska Christian College. Thank you, Eric. I would like to invite all the kids down for their blessing. All right. Do you guys remember how to give the blessing? And we're going to bless the church, and they're going to bless you guys back, right? All right. Ready? May the Lord be with you. And also with you. As the kids are being dismissed, I just want to bring up that this is a time for offering. And this is our time of just being thankful and full of gratitude to God's graciousness towards our church and our community. And um, if you would all bow your heads with me for our time of offering. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for bringing all of us together to worship you and honor you. Lord, will you continue to bless our church? Would you continue to bless our community and all the outreaches and ministries that we may have? Uh, continue to, to be with Alaska Christian College and in our support towards them. Lord, just be with us today in your name. Amen. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all. Will you stand with us, please? The great unknown, we're 
down, please greet somebody around you or a couple of somebody's around you.
All right. I even saw some balcony folks go around and greet each other. This is awesome. <laughs> Not to give you guys a bad time up there. <laughs> Oh, so as we settle into our seats, um, in every church family, we have some uh, time where we get to say hello to a new life and we get to say goodbye or have to say goodbye. And so this morning, um, gosh, <laughs> we say goodbye. <laughs> Sorry. Give me a moment. <laughs> We say goodbye to Lindley. Um, she went home to be with the Lord yesterday. So Lindley, for those who do not know, was the executive director of um, the Children's Center, the first executive director. Is that correct? Can somebody? No, not, not the first one. She was the second one. Okay. Long serving, a member of our congregation, she has been battling cancer for a number of years. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> this is striking a chord with me, I think. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, so let's take a moment and let's pray for Lynn's family. Let's pray for friends and family. Yesterday, we said we remembered the life of Wes Peterson, who was a member of our church. He passed away at 102. These are lives that have impacted so many. And so let's just take a moment and just lift up the family to the Lord. Ah. So Lord God, we thank you for each one of our lives. We thank you that you love us so much. You know the number of hairs on our head. You know how many days we will live on this earth. Did you reassure us that there is nothing we can do to add any days or take away any days? Father, we thank you that it, this is not the end but just the beginning for Lynn, who will be in your presence forever. Father, we thank you that this separation is only for a time, but rather we will be able to be reunited with those who have gone before, with those who have impacted our lives, who have impacted the com community. And so, Father, we lift up Kenny to you, we lift up his, uh, her two sons to you. We lift up the family and friends that are mourning her passing. We lift up Wes Peterson's family and his friends and neighbors that came to celebrate his life, Father. We ask that you would bring your peace, which is beyond our understanding, that you would comfort those who are mourning these losses. And Father, we stand today as a witness to the hope of the resurrection that one day we will be reunited with you and with those that we love and that have gone before us, Lord God. And so we lift up these families to you. We lift up these hearts that are mourning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. More challenging way to start a sermon. <laughs> So this morning, we are starting a brand new sermon series, and it's about God's big story and understanding the Old Testament. And this is an opportunity to look at the meta-narrative of Scripture. So that means the big story. So we're pulling back a little bit. We're going to look at different points throughout the Old Testament that talks about how God reveals himself, his purposes, and his ways. We will be moving quickly through the Old Testament. But if we were to begin with any story, where would we go? Well, we would open up the book and we would go to page one. And page one starts with in the beginning. 
So why don't you take a moment and turn your attention to the screens. Darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovered above the surface of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called this the sky. Evening passed morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land, and the waters seas. God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with plants, trees, and trees that produce seeds that grow fruit, and God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. God made two great lights, the sun and the moon. Then he painted the night sky with stars and saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. God saw that it was good. On the same day, God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals. So God created human beings in his own image, a male and a female. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. I have given you everything that has life. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. On the seventh day, God had finished his creation. So he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. So for many of you, this is a well-known story. You probably grew up in Sunday school listening to this. You've read through it several times. And as I was preparing for the sermon, I was thinking, what new can I add to the creation story? <laughs> so this morning, I probably won't add anything new, but just reminders. And so one of the things, when we open up scripture, when we look at Genesis 1, we see in the very beginning, it says, in the beginning, God. And what if we put a period right there? So God was in the very beginning. He was before time, before creation. He existed before there was anything else. But it doesn't stop there. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. So when we see, when we read through Genesis 1 and 2, who is the one character that keeps showing up? God. 
God keeps showing up. So scripture, scripture says that uh, scripture is there to reveal God himself, his purposes and his ways. And so the first we see is God is the central character of all we experience here on earth. That he existed before time and that everything that we see, everything we have, even the breath of our body is from God. And then it talks about how the earth was formless and empty. It talks that the, the Hebrew talks about this, this kind of chaotic sea and this matter. And, and it was just kind of swirling around. But one of the things it talked about was the spirit of God hovered over that. And so in a way it's saying, what it's saying is that God, even in the midst of chaos, God is, control, is in control of all things. That God's spirit keeps things uh, in its place. And then simply with his word, God creates. He begins to bring order and life to a formless, empty world. And when he's finished creating, we see a repeated phrase, a phrase, which is, it was good. He saw that it was good. And this means that, it, it, that what he created with his word was being functioned precisely as God had purposed it. So it wasn't like he created some trees and he said, oh, whoops, those aren't exactly what I wanted to do. Rather, he created trees and it accomplished the purpose in which he set about for it. And it also means this statement of it was good was that everything that was created contributed to the well-being of what God was doing, what God was creating throughout the universe. So everything that God created brought into existence was brought in to uphold the well-being of his whole creation. And then the new creation, it also means that it was pleasing and beautiful. God looked around and said, this is good. It is good. By naming the elephant, uh, the elephants, elements, <laughs> It's all right, we can laugh. <laughs> By naming the elephants, not the elephants, because the man named the elephants. By naming the elements of creation, like the sun and the moon and the land and the water, what, what that's doing in, in ancient cultures, when you named something, it means you were exercising your sovereignty or exercising your authority over that particular thing. And so when God, as he's creating and he creates the sun and he creates the moon and he, he gathers the water together and brings up the land, he's naming all these things by exercising his authority over all of those things. And he created everything. One of the terms that is brought up in that passage is it says the great sea monsters. And so what it's saying is that God, even, even things that were scary and even things that were big and hard to understand at the time, those were things that God created. There was nothing in our world that was not created by God. And that his authority is over all things. So in the beginning, God it reveals himself that he is eternal and all-powerful and creator. God existed before anything in the universe was created. Everything was created by his word. I mean, just sit and think, for that, think about that for a moment. This morning we sang song after song that exalted God's power and God's creative might in our universe. We talked about the stars and the galaxies. We talked about creation itself. 
and think for just a moment that everything was created by the word of God. He spoke and it came into being. If we sat back and we think about that for just a moment, uh, for me, I don't know about you, but it just brings such awe. It reminds me that God is to be worshipped because of that power, because he is able to do those things. And because he created everything, his authority and his ownership is on all the universe. It's interesting, the Israelites um, took this knowledge to heart that everything in the universe was God, that uh, was God's. And they held to the belief that it, the whole world belonged to God. And they believed that the land that they cultivated, where they grew their garden sins and they grew their crops, the land that they passed down from generation to generation was really on loan from God. So God owned the land that they lived on, and they were tenants on that land. And so think about how that kind of switches the way you would think about how you would use that land. If it was somebody else's and, and you were honoring them, you were taking care of what, they, what he has given you. And so the Israelites, that's how they conceived, that's how they believed that God gave them all that they had. It also talks about how uh, with, with the Israelites, they, um, uh, they believed that even the harvest came from God, that they would thank God for the harvest. That's why they had the certain f- festivals throughout the year, was thanking God for what he provided for them. David writes in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. So we are reminded that God alone can claim ownership of this world because he spoke it into existence. Then the, at the pinnacle of creation, we see this this discussion or this comment that God makes. And it says, God says, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So this combination of the, using the word create in repetition with the phrase in the image of God c- conveys that God, that making human beings was, uh, that in making human beings, God reached the goal of creation. So think about that. God, in his his vast power, in his vast creativity, things that we're still learning about the universe and even things here on earth, that you and I was the very pinnacle of creation. You and I were the ones that he thought, this I will make. I will make humankind, and this will be the top of anything that I've ever created. Such care and such love that God has given us. In the Hebrew, male and female are placed before the verb, which means that it's being emphasized. And so what does that mean to have male and female emphasized? Well, one of them is that God's design for humans was to have both male and female it was that uh, we were a natural part of an uh, expression of who God, who God was. And the implication... Uh, anyway, I'm getting lost here, so I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to find myself. <laughs> um, oh, so when we look at the fact that in Scripture, in the Genesis story, God talks about making male and female... If we look at just males and say that is the image of God, then we only have a partial picture. 
If we look at just females and say that is the image of God, we only have a partial picture of who God is. It is only together when we look at both male and females that we see the full picture of God's image. And I think that's important for us to remember that it's together. God created both male and female so that we would work together. It was also uh, God's blessing on human beings that he would make male and female so that they could carry out the command of populating the earth, of being fruitful and multiplying. And it establishes that God made every male and every female in his own image. I think that that's really important. Whether you are a Christian or not, you are made in God's image. And so how does that change the way we interact with other people? How does it change the way that, and maybe it doesn't change anything for you at all, but how do we, when we look at someone that maybe is different than ourselves, but we can see them as being in God's image, it destroys all sorts of barriers, doesn't it? It helps us to see that humanity is all made in God's image. Helps to remind us that we are to honor those around us. Whether they think differently than us, whether they live differently than us, whether they celebrate life differently than us, every single human being is made in God's image. And it also refers to male and female, that it was a social relationship between the two. That God made us to be in communion, just like uh, the Trinitarian God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live in constant community. We were created to be in community, not only with God, but also with one another. And God said in verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves along the ground. So God assigned humans to rule over. So that Hebrew word that we translate rule it means that humans are to pro pro uh, promote the well-being of animals and to protect, protect them from danger. Just as a monarch fosters the, well, uh, the, well, the welfare of their citizens. And to subdued is a little, it's a stronger word than rule. And it does mean to conquer and sub subjugate. So, but we are God's image here on earth. We are to reflect God's character here on earth. And we know that God cares and loves for everything that he has created. And so as we are to called to rule, we are also called to care for, to think of how do we keep the well-being of the things around us, whether it be land, whether it be our bodies, whether it be somebody else, how do we care for all of God's creation? As image bearers, we represent to the world its rightful king, and we illustrate his workmanship, attributes, and characteristics. David writes another psalm in Psalm 8, and I just want to read this to you. It's not up on the screens. I just want you guys to hear it. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set into place, what is humankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than the angels 
and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands and you put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and animals of the wild, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, O oh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So when we think about God who created all that we know with the power of his word, we know that he deserves our worship. When we think about that he owns because he created, he owns everything that we have. How does it change the way we use the gifts that God has given us? How might God, be, the Holy Spirit, be calling you to live in a different way? And when we live with the knowledge that we are made in the image of God, and we are called to care for the things that God cares for, to care for our earth, to care for each other, how might that change the way that we live? So I have two questions. In the story of creation, as we look at Genesis 1, how do the actions, events, and truths presented in the story touch our lives? And how should we live now in the light of this amazing story? Will you pray with me? Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful that you would care so much for us. That you would create a universe that we're still discovering. That we're still learning about. That we are still filled with awe about. Father, we ask that you would fill our hearts and our minds with the faith that we need to believe that you are God. To be able to acknowledge that everything on earth and in heaven is yours. And Father, we ask that if there's anything in our lives that we need to change so that we honor you who created us in your image, Father, we just ask that you would show us and you would lift that up. Show us how to change, whether it be in thought, word, or deed. And Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your immense amount of love. That we can see that love in the stars, in the fields, in our lives. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Will you stand with us as we sing our final song? Highest of heights in the depths of the sea Creation's revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God 
Every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the of night none can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable all struck we fall to You are amazing, God. Indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable. Struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. You are amazing God. We have a prayer team in the back that would love to pray with you. Also, if you are interested in being a part of the missions committee, we have a meeting over in the Family Center in Heritage Hall, if you would like to join us there right after church. So as you go out into your week, remember that the God who created this whole universe knows how many or how few hairs you have on your head. God has ordained your days. No amount of worrying can add to it or take away. This is the God we worship. Go out knowing that God loves you. And he has called us to walk with him and join him in his mission. Go out in God's peace. Amen. Thank you.